we've finally come to the end of this three-part series. If you have not seen part one and two, go back and watch those first, get caught up, and then come back and watch this one. But for everybody else, go ahead and grab you some snacks, a beverage, some pen and paper, and let's go ahead and finish this out. And just an FYI, the links to the other videos will be down below in the bottom description box as well as in the top right hand corner in the index card. And make sure you stay tuned to the very end of this video because I have a special surprise at the end for you. Now without further ado, three, two, one. All right, so the second thing that is on the list is very, very similar to the first one, but it's different, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Um, and you guys have to understand, you need to be very detailed when you are asking for something. You need to be very specific, okay? Do not take for granted that God knows your heart. That is the laziest saying I've ever heard. So what? That he knows your heart. Your kids know that you love them too, so what you keep telling them you love them every day for? Because it doesn't matter what someone knows, you still need to put forth the energy, the time, the effort, the blood, the sweat, the tears in showing them and proving to them that you love them or whatever the case is. That's the same thing with God. Don't shortchange him, you know? So my second bullet point on here as far as my requests go was about my new upcoming home. It says we are requesting for a successful purchase of blank because it has my current address where we where i am right now this is the house guys this is the one that we're talking about where i am right now so we are requesting a successful purchase of blank we are asking that the purchase is seamless and effortless easy and a smooth transition we are asking that there are absolutely no hurdles that we must jump through and no obstacles that we must overcome i bind up rebuke renounce and come out of agreement with and also cast down and command any demonic delay to flee in the holy mighty name of Jesus. I declare and decree that I will close on the home in 2021. We also ask that the backyard extends back to the tree line and doesn't have hills, dips, or drop-offs. Okay, so let me also tell you something else too. When God tells you no, get excited. When God tells you no, get excited. Do not complain don't feel offended or insulted don't get depressed or anxious or sad get excited and i'm gonna tell you why this requested for us to close in 2021 but we didn't we closed this year in 2022 but guess why because i asked in here and i was confused as to why he was waiting what was the delay about guess what the delay was you guys are never going to believe this we closed on my birthday he, he made my closing date my birthday. It had nothing to do with me. I did not choose that day at all. That's the day it fell on. He wanted to give me this as a gift, as a present. And that is not nobody but God. There are 365 days in an entire year. And you mean to tell me the date that we closed was my birthday? So now I know if I ask for something and he tells me no, it's because he has something better in store for me. And that's the way you guys need to be thinking too. The same thing happened the other day. Here's a good example. I need my Frigidaire microwave and my Frigidaire dishwasher serviced and fixed. We just bought this house in February. We shouldn't be having any type of maintenance issues with those. And so I called the warranty people and they hooked me up with somebody locally, like some local mom and pops, complete care somebody. It's basically like a handyman service because they do a little bit of everything. And if you know, like I know, you don't want somebody that does a little bit of everything, right? You want somebody that's an expert in the, what you need them to do. And so these, this company handled a little bit of paint and a little bit of plum and a little bit of this and that. So the representative, she was like, okay, you have to be available between eight and five like you just have to have an open schedule for this particular company can you be available on this particular day between those times and i'm like okay i guess the day came and i'm getting up at eight because i don't know if they're going to be here closer to the morning or maybe in the early evening who knows so i called the actual company just to confirm that i'm on their schedule for that day this isn't the warranty company this is the company that's supposed to be fixing the appliances 
And the guy answered, he's so unprofessional. He answers like it's his regular personal cell phone. Like, I'm not even calling a company. That was the first red flag. And he's like, yeah, you're not on my schedule. I'm like, why not? I set this up earlier in the week. You're supposed to be coming out today. And he said, oh yeah, we rejected that assignment. What do you mean you rejected it? We rejected it. We have the right to reject stuff. And we did it because you needed it service so soon. And we don't have any availability. Uh, we can't get out there that soon. And my question is, why did the warranty company set it up? Why was that even an option? Why was it showing as an availability if that's not the case? And it was so annoying and irritating. And I'm so glad I didn't have my husband stay home because I don't like dealing with servicemen anyway. I'd rather just stay out the way. I was going to have him like stay home or come home early or what, call out. I don't know, like take a sick day. I don't know. But I didn't. And I'm glad I didn't because they ended up saying they were not coming and they rejected the assignment. So I ended up having to call the warranty company back yet again. So I call the warranty company and I'm like, I called the company that you set me up with and they said that they rejected my assignment. Why don't I know that? And when was someone going to tell me? Because it's the day of and I'm just, the only reason why I even found out is because I called to confirm. Now imagine if I wouldn't have called to confirm because the warranty company originally told me, you don't have to call the company to confirm. We, we set you up on this end. No worries. Um, just make sure you're available that day to let them in to do the work or whatever. So I'm like, okay, but something in me, probably the Holy Spirit, that's why you have to be led by the Holy Spirit. Something in me told me to call the morning of. The warranty company, they apologized. They said they were sorry. And she said she was going to rebook another appointment. And I was like, okay. So she was like, but this is going to be with the Frigidaire people. They only work on Frigidaire appliances. So I'm like, oh yeah. As soon as she set the appointment, I got confirmation through text from the Frigidaire people. It let me track when they were supposed to be coming. Um... Like it was a link, there was a phone number. It was so organized and together because God wants me to have the best of the best. And a lot of times as humans, we just settle for things outside of God. But if you follow God, he gonna always give you the best, period. It doesn't matter if it's a service appointment. So now I have someone who, who works in that field, who's an expert in that field, whether than somebody coming who is not super familiar with that brand. So going back to what I wrote down, I did ask for the house to close in 2021, but when it didn't, I still was not worried. One thing that I want you guys to understand is that worry is worship to the devil, period. Whenever you feel like you're about to start worrying, Start worshiping God. One thing that I start to say is, Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. I will say that over and over and over. Um, and not just like if I'm about to worry, but in a lot of situations, if I'm angry and I'm about to steal off, I will say that. If, you know, like there's so many different scenarios well that works so i did couple a scripture with that last one about the purchase of the new house and the scripture that i coupled with that was john 12 and 27 and that scripture reads peace i leave with you my peace i give you i do not give to you as the world gives do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid so that is what my husband and i did and we ended up being able to put $56,000 down on this house. $56,000. When we were fasting and praying, what I was just reading was typed out in my notes. But I also had a prayer book where I manually wrote stuff as well during the fast and the prayer. And in the actual prayer book, uh, I took a picture of it. Like I said, I'm going to pop it on the screen. I was asking to sell our previous home for like $185,000 or something like that. And then as our faith kept growing, we kept increasing that number. We were like, okay, well, because we only owed $130,000 on the house. So if we sold it for one eighty five dollars or something, that's still a good profit. So we would be like excited and happy about that. We were lowballing ourselves. We were saying like one eighty seven dollars because we knew we owed less than one thirty dollars on the house. And... As we kept growing, our faith kept growing. We kept getting more confident. So we, you'll see where we scratched out numbers and we wrote another number above that. 
and we kept doing that and so we got all the way up to 255,000. That's as far as our confidence and our faith got us. So we started out asking for like 187 and then by the end of it all we had we were saying hoping for and asking God for about 255. Guess how much we sold it for? 265. He did us one better. So because we sold the house for so much profit we were able to put down fifty six thousand dollars on this house now y'all remember this is no money saved up this was buying the house was like not premeditated i literally woke up and applied we started out with a certain low number and within a week it was increased by over fifty thousand dollars by nothing that we did that was literally the grace of god god literally tests you he had such a good sense of humor he was like let me throw this little 290 and see what they're gonna do see if they're gonna be grateful and appreciative for that but he already knew he was gonna turn it up he knew he was gonna rev it up you know what i mean he's like i ain't gonna let her close in 2021 let me see how much she sweat even going back to the first house he admired my faith driving to the attorney's office and not even having all the money that they're going to require once you sit down at that round table i don't know i think he'd be having fun with me or something because he's like shanika she will hold all the way out to the very last second yeah we ended up selling it for 265 and on my birthday and sidebar do you guys remember that five thousand dollar down payment we had to put down on the lot for the land um, well we ended up getting that back and it's so crazy god literally gave us that exact amount of money back and here's how the person who was super interested in purchasing our previous home he gave us what is called earnest money and earnest money is money that the buyer gives the seller to show your good faith when making an offer to purchase the seller's property. The earnest money is not a guarantee that we will sell to him. We could choose somebody else's offer, but it's almost like bribing the sellers because it's showing good faith. And it's saying here, please accept my offer, please. And and by the way, here's $5,000. The earnest money can be all kinds of amounts. Like I've seen them like a couple of hundred dollars before. This guy was so interested, he gave us $5,000. And that was the exact amount that we had to put on the lot. So God will even give you your money back. So that is what we do when we want to save money and we want to pay our stuff early we fast and we pray we put god in remembrance of what he said and with all of the requests that we write down because you got to write the vision and make it plain we couple a scripture with the request as well these are just a couple of things that we do of course there's probably more because i'm pretty sure this video is super duper long i never anticipated it for it to go this long but those are what i would recommend you need to fast and pray and also there's a scripture that says it's if two people come to me in agreement in my name, I will hear your prayers from heaven and they won't return null and void. That means that if you get somebody else to pray with you and they're in agreement with what you're praying, oh, it's a wrap. It's, it's good as done. They're just different codes that y'all can't crack because you won't read the book. You got to read the book to crack the code. And I know the Bible can be confusing sometimes. Sometimes you may not be able to comprehend or understand certain things, but they do have different versions. The NIV is a little bit more plain language. There are definitely ways that you can break it down to understand. That's not an excuse. You don't have to read the King James Version. You, you can read the NIV. You have the Bible Project, which is an animated series for adults. And this is not sponsored. I keep mentioning them because they really are helping me with my walk. A lot of stuff that I don't understand, I automatically go to them on YouTube and they have a whole entire video on it that makes perfect sense to me. I'm just really excited about the goodness of God, about his grace and his mercy. I'm excited about whatever he has in store for me. I think he about to do something real big because I've been doing something behind the scenes here, you know, with the consecration, staying off social media and stuff like that. So, and I'm coupling that with a couple other things that I'm not going to mention right now, but I'll tell you guys about it afterwards but yeah guys so that those are the things that i do to take big large grandiose financial steps in my life there is nothing more 
that you could do besides fasting and praying and reading a book, that's going to get it all the time. I'm never going to beat the pavement. I'm never going to chase a bag. I'm never going to do any of that. Once I crack that code and I realize that fasting and praying and giving alms to the poor, paying tithes and offering, once I found out that's all I got to do and I will get what y'all got and more, oh, it was a wrap, baby. No more. No more. I work smart, not hard, okay? I cannot believe we are, a, we're still considered young. We're a young black couple and my husband retired me at the age of 28. My kids have been homeschooled their entire life. This is our second home and we're not even 40 yet. We're on our second house and we're not even 40 yet. And we drive foreign. All of our kids have their passports. They've had them since they were very young. And that's how we living over here, blessed. And I owe it all to God. So yes, that's, what, that's why I'm dedicating this channel right now to him because he is just too good, like too good. So let me end this with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' holy mighty name, and it's me, Shanika, and I want to repent for all of the sins I've committed up until this point. I also take this opportunity to forgive everyone who has ever wronged me, no matter who they are, what they did, if I deserved it, no matter how recent it was, none of that matters. I forgive them, period. Um, I just want, Father God, that you touch everyone who is watching this video. I ask that you keep them. I ask that you be a fence around them, keep them safe from harm at all times, saturate them in your blood, send your army of angels to surround them all the time, no matter how near or far they go from their home. And I just ask that you just fill them up with all positive emotions and feelings and love on them, allow them to fall in love with you, allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide them and just protect them, give them peace and joy. Father God, I just ask that you bless them and come into their life, come into their heart, remove any type of negative emotion that they may have, remove all anxiety, depression, paranoia, sadness, rage, anger. Father God, I ask that you just continue to extend grace and mercy to them. I ask that you forgive them of their sins. Bless them financially, God, just keep them. And if there's any deficiencies, I ask that you restore them, give them strength, give them faith, give them hope. That's my prayer for you guys in Jesus' holy mighty name. I pray that, amen. So I love you guys. Thank you, my riveting rays of sunshine. And I will see you guys in my next video. I'm free. I'm human, but I'm comfortable with me. I'm capable of everything I need. I'm focusing. Every life has a plan